Welcome back to the Mastering MetaHuman series. In this episode, I'm going to teach you how to bring your own custom meshes and incorporate them into your MetaHuman. To get started, we're going to open up your project that we've been working on the past couple files. Navigate to your content browser, should be within content, MetaHumans, then the name of your MetaHuman. Click on the Blueprint class. Once you're in here, you're going to have different areas that make up your MetaHuman different skeletal meshes and different you know hairs grooms whatever it is and we're going to want to isolate the area that we're trying to change for example if you want to change the torso give them a new shirt new pants new shoes anything like that we're going to want to select the item that you want to swap out for the example here i'm going to work on the torso you'll see in the details panel you'll see the skeletal mesh here if we double click on that it's going to open in a new window here, we could view the skeleton, which here is M underscore SRT underscore NRW underscore top underscore shirt underscore NRM underscore skeleton. That's the skeleton that we're going to want to bind our mesh to, our custom mesh. So what we're going to need to do is we could probably just take this asset here, we go back to the blueprint metahuman, navigate to where this lives in the outliner, and go ahead and click right click. Asset Actions, Export. You're going to want to export this to an area where you'll be able to find it later. I'll just toss it right here for now. And all these settings here should be okay by default for the purposes that we need. I'd like to point out that in this instance, I did export into the content folder within my Unreal Engine project. It's normally bad practice because you're always going to want to keep everything within your content folder to be you assets so it's compatible with the engine but just for the future try to keep it separate into its own separate folder you could use whichever dcc or digital content creation package you want for this case i'm going to be using maya uh, go ahead and import in the skeletal mesh you just popped in when imported you'll see the skeletal mesh the actual geometry plus the skeleton that it's bound to. If you click on some of the bones within the hierarchy, let's say the spine bone, you'll see that the jacket deforms as it should. Now, what we're gonna wanna do here is create a new mesh from the geometry here, just so you can see how it's done. Ideally, you'd have access to Marvelous Designer or a different content creation package that allows you to make higher fidelity clothing and textures. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to turn this jacket into a live object and do a little re topology trace over on top of it. I'll be right back. Alrighty, so let's say this is a little vest that we want to have on our character. Once you have it all modeled how you want it to, what you can do is click on the vest and the root of the skeleton that you need to bind it to. Go to your rigging tab. Again, this is in Maya. You're doing it in Blender. It'll be a very similar process. Go ahead and hit skin, bind skin. Make sure you have joint hierarchy selected and not selected joints. If you need to, go ahead and reset settings. Go ahead and hit apply. Now, if we go ahead and select, let's say, these three spine joints and we bend it, it might look okay, but it might not match one to one of what the uh, geometry beneath it is. So, what we could do is click on that geometry and then your new geometry and hit skin, copy, skin weights. And what's that going to what that's going to do is make sure that all the deformations that you have on that lower level geometry are going to match what you have on this upper level geometry. Now, one thing that you might run into is if you're not layering clothes on what was already there, is you're going to have all this missing geometry on the arms. So in these situations, you're going to have to model the arms that would be underneath the shirt or the chest or the torso and the neck area as well. So that's uh, something that you need to keep in mind 
And what you could do is bring in the head mesh and the hand meshes as well. You could copy the skin weights from their last level vertex chain around the neck or around the wrist to that last level on the wrist that you would have to model if you want to make sure that those connections stay as they should. All right, before you export from Maya though, something that's important to do is to unparent this root bone from this offset group here. They'll make it so you don't get a failed merge bone conflict when importing. So you could left click on your jacket and your root, go ahead and export selection. And did through a couple of tests here, so we're just gonna call this jacket four for the time being. Oop. Go ahead and hit export selection. Most of this stuff doesn't matter too much, but if you have it set to what I do, you should be okay. Then when we go into Unreal Engine, we're just gonna create a new folder. We'll call this jacket for the time being. Up in there, import to game, SK jacket four. And once you get this import dialog window, go into skeletal meshes, skeleton, type in base. You're gonna see a metahuman base scale. Go ahead and hit import onto that. And you're gonna see this new skeletal mesh, physics asset, and material pop up. For the material, I'm just gonna jump in here and make it a little bit more fun. Gonna make this big, puffy, red, shiny jacket, darker. Roughness value here of 8.2. Go ahead and save that out. Cool. Now we could go back in here and we could just go and copy paste the torso. We'll rename this jacket. We compile, save, and in the skeletal mesh asset section in the details panel, go ahead and type in SK jacket. It's gonna be jacket four for me in this case. And we're gonna want to select that Lambert one. Been doing a, <laughs> running a few tests here. Uh, you can see right now it does this kind of weird thing where it's masking kind of the old body here. We don't have to worry too much about that. I think that's just a bug. But from there, we're gonna to wanna to go into the construction script. You're gonna see a lot of these enable master pose functions. Inside of these, we're going to want to extend this construction script. We can control Z, control V to copy this node. And we could add a new skeletal mesh component here. And to get that, we're going to want to select the jacket within the components in our variables. Get jacket, set that in the skeletal mesh component. Go ahead and compile, save, back to the viewport. And we don't see it at all yet. Don't think that's too much to worry about. Let's go ahead and return here. And voila, we've got the character with the vest on in our sequencer. Let's see if the body moves properly. And just like that, it deforms with the metahuman. That's it for this video. If you'd like to see more on how to make custom meshes, whether it's for shoes, more sort of like the body, wings, anything crazy with a metahuman, feel free to let me know. I'd be happy to jump into it. I think for the next video, I'm gonna make a video diving more into making a custom face for the character, as that one's a little bit more in depth and not so much just like copy pasting different uh, skin weights that were already there. It has a lot more to do with uh, different tools and plugins as well as different pipelines that we'll dive into in the next one. So thank you so much for watching, keep learning, and I'll see you next time.